where I've really found Primerasa time useful is for work that really requires discipline, gets a bit boring and repetitive. So for those of you that find it somewhat difficult to stay on track with the task, stay consistent and not be distracted by whatever's going on, that's where Primerasa time has really helped me. I find it has this amazing ability to mute my emotions, stay consistent with work, it was first tested by scientists in the 1970s with patients who had Alzheimer's or major depressive disorder. Researchers then found that Primerastam was up to 30 times more potent than Paracetam. It's being prescribed for the treatment of ADHD, dyslexia, and other memory-related problems. How does Primerastam work? Primerastam has been shown to increase high affinity choline uptake in the hippocampus. Primerastam has a profound effect on the synthesis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine and acetylcholine, this is really important. It's critical for encoding new memories, concentration, cognition, and neuroplasticity. So increased blood flow to the brain means more oxygen and more nutrients to the brain cells, which will then promote better learning and better memory. Primerastam has been shown in the lab to not really have any effect on GABA, dopamine, norepinephrine, or serotonin in the brain. So I wouldn't look at Primerastam to correct any mood or anxiety issues, although given that Primerastam can naturally just make you more focused on your work, it can indirectly lead to a mood improvement. Primerastam, it boosts cognition and health in a variety of ways, but these in particular stand out. Benefit number one is improved memory. And this is one of the common claims about Primerastam that it helps your memory in terms of your short-term memory, your long-term memory, your ability even to retain information. And there is research which backs this. For example, one pilot study of 35 elderly volunteers with memory loss reported that those who received Primerastam showed greater improvements in memory than those who received memory training as well as those who did not receive either. In another study, which was a double-blind, randomized, controlled trial of young men with brain injury, Primerastam was reported to improve both the short-term and long-term memory. And this effect supposedly lasted for up to one month after the treatment was discontinued. And this has been my experience as well when I'm using Primerastam consistently. After about two weeks, I'm able to miss a dose or miss a day of use, and I'm still noticing it working as far as like memory, discipline, work ethic, and mood. Unfortunately though, these studies have some major limitations. For one, they were studies that had very small sample sizes. So naturally, a larger sample size would really help us to see if there is in fact a conclusion that Primerastam does yield results on memory. I myself in the past have used Primerastam in a dosage scheme of 300 milligrams across three times a day. During times when I had very intense studies going on or I had a deadline or an exam that really just required me to put in a lot of hours towards studying. And it was very clear that Primerastam did actually help my grades. As a matter of fact, when I went off of Primerastam, there was a noticeable difference in my grades and I just found it naturally harder to remember things. Things, Although this is subtle, it took about two to three cycles for it to really notice it was working. Benefit number two is that it may be neuroprotective. A handful of studies have looked at Primerastam's potential to protect the brain from the negative effects of other toxins or drugs. In one study, which was a double-blind, randomized control trial of 24 people that were either young and old, but they were healthy volunteers, it was reported that Primerastam partially reduced the memory loss caused by scopolamine, a drug that produces temporary amnesia. According to one animal study, pre-treating rats with Primerastam prevented some of the memory loss caused by the substance, which causes amnesia. Finally, another early animal study reported that Primerastam may partially prevent some memory loss in mice caused by electric shocks. All in all, however, the evidence for these effects is still highly inconclusive and more research will definitely be needed. Benefit number three is that it may affect recovery from brain injuries. A few studies have also investigated Primerastam's potential to help the brain recover from injury or trauma. And according to one preliminary study of 65 people with mild brain injury, Primerastam was reported to reduce headaches, dizziness, and nausea more effectively than paracetam. Another study, which was a double-blind randomized controlled trial of four men with severe brain injuries, reported that six weeks of primerastam supplementation significantly improved their memory compared to an inactive placebo treatment. However, the sample size of this study is very small. Chronic cerebrovascular insufficiency refers to a number of conditions in which the arteries supplying blood to the brain are blocked which can potentially lead to memory loss and other negative cognitive symptoms. And according to one study, Primerastam reportedly improved memory decline in chronic 
cerebrovascular insuff insufficiency patient. Benefit number four is that pramorastam can increase learning capacity. This is another benefit of pramorastam is that it increases learning capacity as a result of lengthened attention span, better concentration, and improved overall speed of mental thinking and mental processing. Most users report that it gives them the ability to solve new problems, use logic in new situations, and use learned knowledge and experience more effectively. And it can be said that these effects are partly due to increase in acetylcholine levels and partly improved blood flow. Cholinergetic system provides an essential substrate for most cognitive processes, particularly those involved in learning and memory. So by increasing blood flow to the brain, pramorastam increases the mind's learning power since it increases alertness, mental capacity, and focus. So the brain depends very critically on oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients and neurotransmitters for cognitive processes. And this explains why poor brain circulation causes brain fog. And the last benefit that we'll talk about is that pramorastam can reduce social anxiety. Social anxiety is the reason that most people do not speak up their minds for fear of being judged and negatively evaluated by others. For an entrepreneur, for instance, anxiety is almost always a natural byproduct of the highs and the lows of business. The unfortunate thing is that it is an impediment to achieving goals as one feels insecure to approach people and talk to them yet Communication is central to any business. Therefore, when social anxiety becomes debilitating to life, it has to be dealt with. Pramorastam is one such nootropic that the smartest people turn to to be calmer, verbally intelligent, and articulate with words. The secret to alleviating social anxiety is to achieve a good balance of serotonin, dopamine, GABA, acetylcholine, and other neurotransmitters. Now let's talk about a couple nootropics that can go really nicely with pramorastam to make a great overall stack. And the first would be oxyrastam. And oxyrastam, it's another rastatam. It's more effective in terms of general concentration, mood. You also feel like a little bit mentally stimulated when you take it. I find that one ingestion of oxyrastam is noticeable for me. Um, I feel somewhat alert. I get a bit of clear mindedness and it's like my priorities come top of mind. So we're Oxyrastam and Pramorastam work well together is in which Oxyrastam can give you like the motivation, the alertness, the concentration to start the task and Pramorastam can help you to endure the task during those times when it's boring, it gets a bit repetitive and you start having a little bit of fatigue. So the way in which I use Oxyrastam is I would have at the same time as Pramorastam. So if I'm taking Pramorastam three times a day on longer work days, I would have my Pramorastam 300 milligrams along with the dose of 750 milligrams of Oxyrastam. So three times a day on a long work day and on a shorter work day two times a day. And the second rastam that can go very well with pramorastam is anorastam. This is the container over here and I'm typically dosing it as frequently as pramorastam and oxyrastam. The dosages with all the rastams are very tricky unfortunately like pramorastam is a lower dose, oxyrastam a little bit higher, prastam higher and then anorastam lower. So it takes a bit of time to really know what dose works for you but I would always suggest that you just consult with your GP first, assess your tolerance, start off with the lowest dose possible if you are to introduce it to your supplement stack and if anything the container in which you got it should display how often to take it and what the correct serving size is. So the way I'm using anorastam is 500 milligrams each dose and what I like about anorastam unlike the other rastam is that it's very effective for anxiety specifically social anxiety. I find that everything's better from my willingness to approach people to introduce myself to ask questions and just be bold, be fearless, and enjoy having conversations all together. But hey, there's a lot of nootropics that don't do anything for me, and pramorastam is something that I can definitely tell it's working. The first two or three cycles, it was a little bit hard to notice, but if you're somebody like me that works long hours and is in a somewhat high stressful job, believe me, pramorastam is very effective. And yes, it is one of the more expensive rastatams, which is why not a lot of people take it and not a lot of people talk positively about it. But after multiple times of introducing it to my stack, then taking it out of my stack, then reintroducing Introducing it. I've just found that Pramorastam is a must for me and it would go in my top 10 nootropics. And if you were to ask about the side effects, what's very common amongst the Rastatams and Pramorastam are headaches and brain fog. And if this is taking place, then I would think you're probably taking too much for your body. Unfortunately, with the Rastatams is that they're so variable between different people. Some Rastatams may work for me that may not work for you. And some Rastatams may work for you, but do nothing for me. So the first tip would be to lower your dosage. And the second tip would be to supplement with choline as well as it's known that you need to replenish your choline stores when you're taking pramorastam and there's a few ways in which you can supplement with choline especially if you're not eating a choline rich diet the first in which would be taking choline by tartrate 
The second popular form of choline is CDP choline. And then the third way you can supplement with choline is through taking alpha GPC. That's my favorite. I've made a video on it recently, which I will link over here. So the practical way of doing this is every time you're taking your Pramiras time, you're having it along with the choline source. So for me, what that looks like is 300 milligrams of Pramiras time along with about 200 milligrams of alpha GPC. If you're curious about the other racetams, I've made videos on oxyracetam, anorastam, parastam, and phenylparastam, which is very different, but very effective. So do check out those videos if you wanna learn more. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Drop a comment, give the video a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna chat with me one-on-one -on -one, or you wanna see information that I don't post on YouTube, then follow me over on Patreon. It's Michael Dougal, the Nootropic Reviewer. I appreciate your support and I'll see you soon.